Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord for yet another opportunity to to meditate on His Word. Um, our Lord taught us to pray in saying, Give us this day our daily bread. And um, at these times, we definitely no, we, we definitely do need daily bread, the bread of life. He says, labor not for the meat that perisheth, but for that which endureth unto eternal life. So it, it tells us that it is possible to feast on something that would metamorphose you into life. And it is true. And it is true. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, this is part two, and um, in part one, we, 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 we attempted to establish what we call the container principle, the principle by which one person is doing something, but it's spiritually speaking, a, a, company, a, a multitude of persons are reckoned in him, and as such, he is all those in him are said to be doing what he has done and the fact that they were in him doing it or they were not born yet does not make it less of an action we looked at hebrews chapter 7 lovely example where for argument's sake it was said that levi paid tithe to melchizedek just trying to say that there is a higher priesthood than the ironic for the lesser is blessed of the greater but it was not obvious that the Levit Levitica was submissive to the Melchizedek order, but they linked it to Abraham to say, hey, when Abraham was paying tight to Melchizedek, Levi was in his loins. And because that is true, then Levi paid tight to Melchizedek. Likewise also, when Adam was seen, we were in him. And so it is reckoned that we disobeyed God. We obeyed Satan. We yielded ourselves as servants to Satan by obeying Satan. That is the record in the realm of the spirit. Because we were in Adam when he sinned. So scripture will say we were all born in sin. But now, if that is the case... Then there is a righteous provision for First Corinthians 15 will say, As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now the assumption is that we that are listening to this are believers. And we want to see what is the efficient manner with which I can make a, a, a profitable advancement in my Christian life. But to do so, we... we we take a look at what has brought us to this point we are. Understanding the mystery of the born again experience. To see how Colossians 1 will say we were translated from the kingdom of darkness to from the power of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. If you look at it as two territories that the parable would describe as having a great gulf between them. Yet we traversed kingdoms in the spirit a huge accomplishment simply by reckoning that was the miracle that took place at the born again but romans 5 says that when we were enemies we were reconciled by his death much more shall we be saved by his life if we have partaken of miracle one to transit kingdoms simply by a reckoning and scripture tells us that there is a much more salvation by his life it is evident that we need to look to see what manner of reckoning shall i reckon that i may it shows that when scripture says i shall be satisfied when i awake in thy likeness it is a gospel truth a clue to the nature of the transformative work that can take place that's why he says that no flesh will glory in his presence so that is what we want to look at and um, we will begin our bearing from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We, 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 we said that 
How did we become reconciled to God? We had a debt to pay. And we paid it. How did we pay it? Well, the debt to pay was death. So we died. And um, we cleared our debt. Because we needed to die to pay the debt. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sinned shall die. So we were reconciled to God by dying. And dying, we died. But there was a container that assisted us through the process. And that container is Jesus. Just as Abraham was a container for Levi to Melchizedek. And Adam, unfortunately, was a container of us all to Satan. Christ Jesus is a container for us, all humanity, unto salvation towards God. So, because he came and we were in him and he died, we in him died. So, we paid our debt. And because he resurrected, that's why his resurrection is our hope. Had he not resurrected, then it means that there is no in him, that there is no container that is our vehicle to come out of the grave. We are finished. We have paid and we remain in that state. But because he resurrected, we have a hope. Because in him, we came out. So now, we are debt is paid. And now, we are free to still serve the living God in righteousness and holiness without fear. That being the case, it is only one part of our advancement. How do we still make the next phases? Something I've been thinking about. You could look at the feasts and call them the seven phases of our Christian life. But that's a digression. But the point is, we made the Passover transaction. We made the first leap, the reconciliation, the migration from death to life. The migration from prodigal to reconcile. The migration from having a debt to pay and having it paid. All that took place in him. But that happened 2,000 years ago. Yet you may have begun your Christian journey five years ago. And maybe you were born 20 years or 30 years ago. So what happened between 30 years ago and 5 years ago? 5 years ago, you believed. 5 years ago, you reckoned. 5 years ago, you keyed into that which happened 2,000 years ago. 5 years ago, you said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Technically, what you are believing that he is an Adam. I believe that that which he did, he did for me and I in him. He is Adam enough for me to be contained in him. I believe it. I reckon that when he died, I died. And when he resurrected, I resurrected. And by that belief and confession, you see, with the heart, we believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, we confess it unto salvation and by that transaction we were reconciled so a person may be feeling empty looking for God having all manner of sorrows in his heart and at the time he confesses the Lord as his Lord and experience the born again experience he has peace that passes all human understanding he can tell that there is a witness. If his heavens were brass, they are open. Light shines into his being. He cannot explain it, but he knows he has experienced a newness of life. Spiritually speaking, he has made a great journey. And he can be a witness. Now, one could have said to him, Thou must have peace in thine heart. And he stuck. How do I have that peace? I can try, I can try, I can try. But he just needed to agree. We speak about the finished work of Christ. But the way to relate with it is a reckoning. You reckon of faith unto victory. And that is an efficient Christian life. So that you find yourself making leaps in the spirit. That are beyond your ability. So that you actually have no reason to boast. And because he's the one upholding you. You know that immediately you shift your eye. You will sink. Like Peter did. When he stopped looking at Jesus. Having understood that. 
And if this is the manner with which we began our born again experience, Romans 5 excites my heart when he says that reconciliation that you did is because you aligned with his death. But if you can align with his life, Kai, much more salvation. And I'm like, wow, I reckoned to align with death. I mean, yes, and I was reconciled. Then I need to, re- what do I need to reckon with in his life? And then 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First, the last verses. Um, we can read from. We can read from. Verse twenty six. Is it for see? If for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 28. He said, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to not things that are. 29 that no flesh may glory in his presence he does not have time for flesh glorying in his presence no he does not i like to imagine a record in scripture though he was talking about um a fallen one he said thou walkest upon the stones of fire because i i i made you so so the lord can make us into only and he has he has made us but we shall see it by reckoning he said that no flesh may glow. He said, verse 30, but of him, of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Now, having said all the many things we have said, we can begin to appreciate why he that glorieth should glory it in the should, yes he that glorieth should glory in the Lord, because he that was to be reconciled was reconciled in Christ. So also he that glory any advancement you make will be because of what. So by the container principle, by the container principle, it's like an ark. And we are inside. Whatever happens to the hack happens to us. So we are blessed. If our hack goes left, we have gone left. If our hack goes right, we have gone right. If our hack, our container, ascends far above all heavens, we have ascended far above all heavens. But what has happened to our container? It says he is made unto us wisdom. He is made unto us righteousness. He is made unto us sanctification and redemption. I like the way Colossians says his own. Colossians chapter 2. Chapter 2. He said, for in him, Kai, by the container principle, Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 is like a blank ticket, blank ticket for reckoning. Where you can reckon, this is, this is, Romans 5 showed the aspect of his death and how we reckon with that unto reconciliation. First Corinthians 1, speaking about wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. First Corinthians, Colossians chapter 2. Um, and even we will see, there's another passage, Revelations chapter 5, verse 12. Revelation 5 verse 12 says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. By the container principle, because our container, He received power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And that's Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. And Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Kai. That means that that means that if all this has already happened 2,000 years ago but I became a born again Christian when I reckoned it means that after reckoning 
to reconciliation. I can be a Christian and just be going. But it is at the junctions when I reckon. I become wise to the extent to which I reckon that in him I am wise because he is wise. Just as in him I died because he died, it means in him I am wise because he is wise. In him I have power because he has power. To the measure we can reckon with that, that's why we, have, we experience leaps in our Christian life. A man preaching will say that um, you do not measure your life in terms of time but in terms of encounter. And it makes so much sense. And the encounter is encounter with Jesus, encounter with Jesus in the word. Because the Bible will tell us that, do not say in your heart who shall go up to bring Jesus down, or who shall, Romans 10, I believe, or who shall bring him up. But he says, what does he say? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. This is the word of faith that we preach, meaning the Jesus who touched somebody's eye, the open, I can have him stand and touch my eye too, but I invoke his presence through the word. So by the provision of reckoning and the container principle, just as I did with his death unto reconciliation, now that he liveth, Romans chapter 5 says, that which you experience is great, chapter 10, 5 verse 10, but much more if you can reckon and key into his life as you key into his death the salvation you experience is much more so now i've been reconciled and he's alive but as he's alive what is he he has received riches and honor and glory and blessing and power colossians says that in his being alive he is made the fullness of the godhead bodily so that just as I was in him when he died, so also I am in him as he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's why the next verse will say, and ye are complete in him. Complete speaks of a perfecting. Ye are brought to completion, fullness. The, the completion of your recreated destiny in God. The, 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 the materialization of what God has ordained you to be is in him. To the extent you can reckon yourself to be a part of that which he is, to that measure it becomes yours. And you did it when you were to be reconciled to God at your born again experience. So the simplicity of faith towards God is the means by which we make great leaps. If you see yourself in him, then, then, then that which he is will be manifest in your life. Now, understanding helps our mind, so we may be wondering, but how does this work? How do I agree? For some of us, this is sufficient. Drawing from the strength of that which we already know, we say, Kai. That means when I see contradictions in my life, I simply need to reckon, because that is how I moved from a prodigal person to a reconciled person. I believed. I believed. And it was accounted unto me as a valid transaction. So, though I was already reckoned, all humanity already died with Christ 2,000 years ago because he's an Adam. And in him is all the seed of humanity made new, according to 1 Corinthians 15. But the people who experience it, that's why I see every man in his order. The order is defined by the reckoning of faith. The people who experience the fact that they are reconciled are those who agree and accept it and believe it and confess it. They reckon it and they become it. So also, in his living, among Christians, the progress and advancement of our Christian life is to the measure we cease to labor. That's why Hebrews will say, Labor to enter the rest. It seems like a paradox. Cease from your own works. Our blessed work is a work of reckoning. Because in him, he has he, he has been made unto us wisdom. Now, the language can be very interesting. First Cor uh, um, Corinthians. And it is when you see that the, the matter is a matter of reckoning, it makes sense why no flesh will glory. Because any prophet you manifest 
was downloaded to you by reckoning. So you cannot boast when you down. Just like nobody can dare to boast about his Christianity because you knew that it was reckoning that afforded me to partake of his dying and his resurrection. So also it is by reckoning I am wise. It is by reckoning I can manifest God. Immortality, it is by reckoning because he is already immortal. So that's why we say when he says the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelleth in him, it means I, I, I am in him. As the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in him, I am in him. The What is required for that fullness to manifest in me is a reckoning. I need to agree with it just as I agreed with his death. So you say much more if you can agree with his life. Kai. The salvation you experience is much more. Romans 5.10 Now, how does it happen? Assuming we see ourselves as cells in the body. What trans moves and maintains the constancy of life through the entire body so that that which is happening in this hand is happening in this leg also is the flow of life, the blood. Now, it is the life of Christ that moves to accomplish in me that which I am in him. So, by reckoning, I expose myself to that life, to work in me that which I have reckoned that I am in him. Because in actuality, by the container principle of God, I am in him. It is my, it's almost like, you know, how you have a subscription, Microsoft, and then there are different apps online, and you can now download it. You have it, it's yours, it's given to you. But for you to use it on your PC, for example, hopefully we can relate with the uh, analogy, you need to actually download it to your machine. So also, in him, he, he, he is the container, and in him, he has been made unto me wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, and riches, and blessing, and power, and glory, and the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Meaning, in Him, even while I am here, I can afford to manifest the Godhead to the measure I can reckon it. But physically speaking, the life of the blood flows through the whole body to make consistent across the body the life that characterizes the body. So also, the life of God works in me when I reckon in agreement to that which I am in Him. But what is the life? And what is the means of the life? It is simply the spirit of life. We'll try not to waste too much time. It's the spirit of life. And where is the spirit of life? Or how is the spirit of life invoked? John six sixty three it says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. That's why he can say, ye are clean by the words I spoke. I spoke words to you, but what I was, I was releasing to you was spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. Stand upon your feet and I will talk. And the spirit entered into him and stood him upon his feet. It was not a labor of himself to try to stand. The word, the spirit of the word entered him and stood him up. So now. By the time I reckon to a truth in the word of God, because he is the word of God, and every subset of truth in the word of God is a spirit of life. And that mechanism of the word of God being the spirit of life is the synonym or, oh, is the, let's work with synonym, is the, is the comparison to the, the blood flowing in the body. So that what the blood does to normalize and bring to uniformity the life in this hand to the life in this leg. So that all parts of my body are bearing witness to the same measure of life that is the character of my body. So also the body of Christ. Christ has a character of life. And there is a flow of life, which is the spirit of life in him that causes all parts of him to experience the character of life that is Christ's. 
But that spirit of life, each person partakes and comes into consistency with the life that is Christ by reckoning of faith. But what are you reckoning to? You are agreeing with a truth, a truth in the word of God, which is the spirit. Because he said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. So you understood the truth in the gospel. You believed it. And then you reckoned and became reconciled. It was preached to you. Even that fact that Christ has died and resurrected for you. So also, you take a matter of God in the word. You believe it as, as the word of God, as a spirit of life. Because the words I speak, they are spirit and life. I just like to say the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit of life. You agree with the word and you believe it. And by believing it, as he did to Ezekiel in chapter 2 verse 1, that spirit comes and walks in you. That which you have reckoned that you are in him. So when I come to terms with the fact that the word of God says, I reckon, First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 says, Christ has been made unto me wisdom. That means I, am, I know that I am in Christ and as he is, he is wise. And I am in him as he is wise. Therefore, by the principle of reckoning, by the container principle, I affirm and I believe that in him I am wise. Your interaction in believing and confessing that truth would afford you the working of the spirit of life to bring your present reality to par with what you already are in him. You will find yourself walking in wisdom because the spirit of wisdom will be downloaded to you. The Lord would expand this word in our hearts. But I just like to keep referring to the fact that this is what you did when you were becoming born again. And it is what you need to do to cover much ground in a short time. Because the means by which there is a quickening and a cutting short is by the righteousness of faith. Which righteousness of faith is by reckoning. But Christ has been made unto us many things. So Paul will say, if you could reckon to the death unto reconciliation, much more if you can reckon to his life then you will experience such great dimensions of salvation. Salvation that will take you from foolishness to wisdom. From inability to walk in strength and moral rectitude to holiness. From feebleness to power. From having no virtue or anything praiseworthy to glory. From mortality to immortality. It is all a matter of reckoning. So we go back and we ask God, Lord, help me to believe your word. Believe the gospel. That is why it is the power of God unto salvation. Because the gospel describes that which you already are in him. He told you that in him you died and in him you are resurrected and you believed it. But it also tells you that in him you are wise. You should believe it. You cannot search for wisdom somewhere else. He tells you that in him you are sanctified. In him you are holy. In him you are a house of prayer. In him you say, not my will, but thine be done. In him, you say, I delight to do thy will, O God. In him, you come as it is written in the volume of the books. In him, in him, in him, you are seated at the right hand of majesty. You begin to walk in the light of these things to the measure you reckon it. But your reckoning is by exposure to the spirit of life. But the spirit of life is in the word of God. That spirit of life is the life that flows through the body of Christ to make every part experience the 
character of life that is the portion of Christ. So when you reckon in agreement to what you already are in him, the spirit of life which will operate as the blood would walk in you so that you will experience the character of life that is the portion of Christ. The Lord will help us. May the Lord communicate these things as spirit beyond the limitations of the English language. But we are thankful for the one he has afforded us to, to partake of. In Jesus' name. Amen.